everybody. Welcome back to another week of Half Circle Back. We've got my co-host Tim. What's going on, man? What's up, dog? Uh, I don't know, man. Same old, same old. What you uh what you been up to? You? Man, work. Work, 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 work. I haven't played Street Fighter in a week. Oh my god, it's killing me. <clears throat> but awesome. but I've been uh, go- doing some uh been listening to a lot of like old rap as of late. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Camp Low. And this, you know, was it a Saturday night special? Right? Am I right on that? I might be wrong. Uh, that's the wrong. It's Saturday night uptown. That's the there. You go. Sar- yeah, yeah right. Saturday night uptown. My bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a banger. You know what I'm saying? Definitely an underappreciated album, but yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a banger. Um, what else? <clears throat> What else I've been listening to? Uh, Scarface. Okay, what what Scarface albums though? Oh shit, I don't know. I was like, hold on, I gotta go back and see my history, dog. Don't hate me. Cause... Also, Young Bleed, by the way. I mm-hmm. uh, go fuck. I, he only had one good song. <laughs> that's the song I need to hear, dog. That, that's literally it. How you do that <laughs> is like the only. Memorable song he had, the untouchable, was... the un the untouchable and the diary. Okay, the diary is probably his best album, and next to the fix, in my opinion. But uh, but um, the fix is good. But untouchable is good too. It's got some. Uh, I I don't think I've listened to that one enough. I think I've kind of cherry picked songs I like off of it. But uh, yeah, I think uh, what was the what was the last Scarface album I was peeping for? Let me go back. I actually got to look this up. It was because I listened to the diary a lot. And then yeah. it was an album that came out before that, that I had, uh, that I had finally like went back and just peeped. And I was like, yo, oh, the world is yours. There we go. Yo, that one. So the, like the thing I, I love about Scarface albums is just how like it's his delivery and the production. Like this dude has some of the hardest production. Like and it's very simplistic. I mean, because it's southern, southern hip hop, so it's not fucking you know overly complicated. But yeah. it's just straight and to the point. And it's like the the drum choices and man, yeah. Uh, Diary is classic. If anybody has not listened to that, do that. And uh, the world is yours is also super good. So right. I would, uh, it would be the other um, one that I would recommend to people. On my blog, I gotta say, man, that might be my favorite Scarface song. Though. I know that I know that it's might good. be like a that you know that's good. I don't know, man. It's something about that one. Then uh Smile is another good song. I like yep. those. Um I know I should go down like the ghetto boys like rabbit hole at some point since so I have been listening to Scarface. So I don't know. there's some stuff I would say is worth checking out, but I don't think you I wouldn't say it's required listening but yeah, yeah, yeah you can obviously. definitely dabble into it just so you get an idea of like you know of what it is yeah um what else camp lows carface um uh dabble uh some mob deep what's the infamous classic know, it's a banger and, uh, yeah you know just been it's been like in and out of things I've been kind of treading into 2000s like rap, but I'm just like, I don't think I'm ready to go back and relive the 2000s. Uh, there's definitely some albums that I could I go back to from time to time from that uh, from that era, but yeah, I, you know, the 2000s was special mainly because you know, uh, like I love my I love my southern rap, so you know, I definitely uh, you know, go there listen to some Jeezy. I'm not the biggest TI fan, but I go and listen to trap music. No, that's about uh, it. Yeah, I mean, I would say from that era, Thug Motivation 101. I mean, that's a that's a classic. So, uh, so. I'm trying to think of what the uh, Urban Legend that was. Uh, that was the third TI album, I think. Right? Yes. That's the one that had bring them out and all that other shit. Yeah. All right, see that's that still hits. I could. Uh, okay, I, I got a question. I got a question because I had like I had a friend of mine like 
tell me that you know Ti does Ti actually have bars to make you think like oh man that was some hot shit. Mm, it's like um I would put him on the level of like a uh, a Bun B of like he doesn't have hard bars but it's just clever shit. Well, I guess Bun B does have some hard bars, but I mean I, I uh, think I think you know Bun B um, definitely. But he's more clever than he is like a spitter. You know, it's like that that yeah. type of Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm not crazy. Cause you're talking about T I has bars. I'm like, look. Like T I is cool and all, but it's not like you know, he's out here like spitting like that. Like you know. Nah, it's not like a, a ludicrous where like ludicrous actually has bars, you know. But Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you cleared that up for me. So I'm not a crazy person. Yeah, no, that's not a that's yeah. not a uh, a a hot take. Yeah, no, 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 no. I have some friends who are like, yeah, man, it's like Jeezy don't got bars. I'm like, yeah, Jeezy don't really have bars like that. But you know, it's pretty good at storytelling. But you know, that's another topic for another day. You know. Yeah. But what about you, dog? What you been up to since I've been out your since I've been out your life for about a week? Uh, really, man, just, uh, grinding, you know, we, uh, we had our first offline tournament, uh, oh boy. <laughs> so that, uh, that was an experience, man. So the shout outs to, uh, <laughs> new challenger approaching, you know, that's, uh, I, if anybody happens to be in the Alabama area for this, uh, these guys run tournaments in Auburn and, um, uh, and anyway, you know, we had. They they're throwing tournaments regularly pre COVID, but uh, after all this started slowing, you know, after all that picked up, we didn't have tournaments for a while, and now things are starting to starting to get back to somewhat normal. So anyway, they decided to host their first tournament. So and the turnout was uh it was better than I expected. So that was a good thing. I, I didn't think people really were ready to come back out their house and play, but uh, enough people showed up. I mean, we had enough to uh, to run Street Fighter. I think we had eight or nine people, which I was expecting four. That's really what I was expecting. <laughs> but uh, we had enough to run a Street Fighter bracket, so that was cool. Um, but it was mostly just nice that I finally got to see everybody. You know, I got to play Street Fighter Five offline, but I also had to readjust the PS4 from a whole year of playing uh playing on PC. So that was also uh, an experience. And uh, not to mention, this was also my first tournament on Hitbox. So oh, yeah, I was about to ask you, I was like, like did, you, uh, did you convert fully to Hitbox? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, shit, I switched over in January. I hadn't touched a stick since. As far All right, as, like, cool, playing. man. Go ahead. Go ahead and uh, hook your boy up with some sticks. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. Nah, Go ahead and hook nah. your boy up with some sticks, bro. Nah. Not not yet. I again we uh we gonna see how the rest of this year goes. Uh you know. I mean if, you did if, uh, you did enter NOBC last thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I like I I'm still I, I would say I'm like closer to where I was, but I, I still ain't where I was on stick. So we uh we got some time. We still got a few months to to test this thing out, so oh, oh you're still testing. Okay, you getting you see you send out some testers. Okay, I see. Yeah, but yeah, see but yeah, block, see if the block likes it or not. See the fiends oh, like my it. Oh my god! Um, see. but yeah, it, it was a uh, it was super fun, man. And randomly, Waka Flocka showed up. So apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, he was good friends with uh the guys that run uh Jesus that run the tournament, Jesus which is the most god. uncanny. <laughs> just I don't fucking. <laughs> It's like the "Are You Afraid of the Dark" level of, uh, like a story oh, where you be like, "There's no fucking way that he knows these," people. but he he did. So, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I uh, I had to leave. I'm so sorry. You right there? <laughs> hold on, right quick. Hold on, right quick. Hold on, right quick. Hold on, right quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've been gone way too long. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on this hold on. man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I got you. Oh, my God. Cut that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> 
You about to get us DMCA. <laughs> oh shit, my bad. <laughs> you know what? See, hey, you know, before let me get off topic for a little bit. So you know, uh, ex military has like been taken off like Spotify like a million times, right? Uh-huh. So um someone finally uploaded ex military as a podcast on Spotify. So you know, it's you know, I don't think our chances of getting DMCA are not that high. So if you if you say so. All right. Sure. Um but but yeah, anyway, I, I had to leave before uh like at, matter of fact, as he got there, uh I had to leave because I brought the fam with me, so we had to go get food and and all that. But yeah, apparently people got to play uh play Street Fighter with them and I think there was a uh raffle to play uh Dev Jam Fight for New York, which I think uh Maurice won. So him and Maurice played uh play like a first of three in Def Jam. So uh that was cool. I mean uh, shout outs to him mm. for coming out, you know, supporting the uh, supporting you, the scene. If Flocko so, on, on the podcast, if we just a uh, user, I mean, I feel like you have uh, a better chance of that, have that happening. I mean, I don't have clout like that, man. You know, I so mean, I but you know, we know someone who has clout like that. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> look, man, I've heard some wild shit in my time. And hey, look, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um. Before I start rolling into everything, man, have you seen all this? Uh, I guess I'll get your take on this whole money match thing. Have you seen this shit going on on Twitter over the past week? So I, I believe that you tagged me into it, right? Are we talking about like between Espada and a and a destructive? Yeah, right? well, that was the beginning of it. So okay, you did see that. You're aware of that, though. Right? Yeah, 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 I am aware of that. Okay. Did you did you also see the follow up where Nova Spec challenged uh destructive after the fact? Uh I okay, so I th- I saw you post something in Discord. I didn't really check it out because like at that point like I was over it. But now nah, I need you to humor me. <laughs> so uh, first off, let let's give a shout out to Destructive being the most opportunistic man in the FTC right now. He just got people challenging him left and right now. Cause even after the um even after the the uh, Nova Spec match, he got Brawly Legs trying to challenge him. Now I'm <laughs> like, bro, you really about to collect? They about to give this man? You tell him another run through Texas, look. I guess it. Look, somebody posted the fucking picture of the, oh, uh, the, picture the MK of the, Tower. Oh, uh, it's on the Street Fighter Two one. <laughs> oh yeah, that was one, and then somebody posted the fucking MK Tower too. That was the other one that was too good. Oh. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, with Nova Spec, so I guess uh, at some point, Destructive had like talked shit about uh, Nova Spec's play or whatever, and he was like, oh, well, you know, you beat uh, another Dallas player, you know what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. You know, you said you wanted to play, we could play for money. So he, he put it up and said, let's play for 500. Uh, Des, first of all, let, let, let me paint the picture. My man Nova Spec dropped the promo in the bathroom. Oh, I respect on the it. toilet. I respect it. So that that set the tone right there. He said five hundred, and then Des came back and said, uh, "I'll do 50. and then <laughs> what? He's yeah. He said, "I'll do 50, but that's it. And and no respects, like, nah, man. Look, we got to play for more than that. If you got a crowdfund or whatever. That uh, then put it, then get it, but uh, you know, I'm only playing you for a hundred. So, the thing people took it well, all right. So, let, let's 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 start with this first question How do you feel about crowdfunding money matches? All right, so if my regulation is correct, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not the first time this has happened before. If I'm correct, I want to say the Ray Ray Fanatic match, I want to say people were. Helping, or I guess, funding some of the players like the money for that five thousand dollar money match. If I'm correct, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you're okay, are you only playing for a hundred? Well, so they ended up just playing for a hundred. It was well, actually it was just fifty. They both put fifty up, and they just okay, played. okay. Now, yeah. okay, so I feel like after a certain number, you can crowdfund, right? Right, if you, I, I feel like anything like maybe five hundred and above, you can crowdfund. Anything five hundred and below, I feel like you should be able to put it up. That's just me. Well, 
like the thing that people took out of context was like I felt like people were they they took Nova Spec saying he wanted more money and being like, oh, and like he just wants money. He like it's not about the it should just be about playing the dude or whatever and all this other stuff. And they tried to turn him into I don't think this was what Nova Spec really was trying to do. I don't think he was trying to be like money hungry. I think he was just like, Well, you talked enough shit. Uh, I'm not going to play you unless you really put money up to make this serious or whatever. But yeah, everybody uh, flipped it and tried to make it seem like he was playing for clout or playing for, you know, trying to get like make a buck or whatever. But I don't think that's no, what it was. Put your money up, dog. What do you mean? But I am about the, hey, look, you can't be, you can't, first of all, you can't be coming to a money match with somebody else's money. You at least got to put something up. And like when Des said he only had 50, at that point, you either take it or you'd be like, nah, I'm not going to do it. Well, let's play whenever you want to do something, whenever you want to play for more or whatever. But uh, I mean, I don't know. At the end of the day, if it was real beef, you would have just took the 50 and just moved on. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the that's kind of the way I, I think about it. But I don't know, boy. Didn't he say like uh, it was a wash because he like he beat a spot of like, 10 7? He beat, no, he beat a spot of, yeah, it was 10 7, I think, against a spotter, but like it. Like, I don't know. I think they both were nervous because I think it got so hyped up the way they were playing. They both didn't look like they were like super on point. So I think uh, it was a little bit of nerves because a lot of people were watching. But uh, yeah, the Nova Spec thing, it was that was a blow up because I think the end of the score was like 10 4, like 10 5. I forget what it is now. But cool. either cool way, uh, destructive. So Nova Spec oh, was up 4 to 4 0. Right, like, huh? zero. Hold on, he was up four zero, and then destructive one eight straight. Hey man, I need to stop playing this game. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! You're joking, so, right? No, that's exactly what happened. He he won eight straight, and then I think maybe Nova won one game, and then after that, Des closed out the set. So I want to say it was like ten five. I can't remember the the actual score, but yeah. <sighs> But this is the, you know, the only thing about it is it's like, I felt like nobody had this type of energy when we had offline events. Nope. It's only happened once we. You know what's funny? You know what's funny though? <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. It's funny because Rob TV tried that in the beginning of quarantine, right? There's money matching people. And everybody was like, like nah. a personal beef, I think, more than anything. Oh, okay. Well, he, I mean, yeah. he still did it, right? Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Yeah. But, you know. But that's somebody who did it offline, too. So it's not out of character. Like, I've seen yeah. I've seen a money match people before. But, like, a lot of these dudes, these people, <laughs> they didn't have this energy when we was offline. You know what I'm saying? And, and it is what it is. Maybe, maybe uh, because a lot of people have been playing a lot more or being in online tournaments or whatever it's more of, it's been more of a confidence boost which is cool i mean cool like hey look that's everybody leveling up you know said so a lot of people have been stepping their shit up during quarantine so that's sick uh i just want to hey i want to see the same energy offline that's all i'm saying hey, i'm, I'm trying, trying to see to. the money matches come back because that's one thing that i will say has been lacking for the street fighter 5 air and street fighter 4 you would you could argue that a lot of shit was gate kept by money matches. Like if you wanted to get experience against a lot of these high level players, you just had to pay. You know what I mean? Like you just it was just it was a foregone conclusion. If I wanted to play Punko in Street Fighter Four, I had to money match. You know what I'm saying? Like or if you wanted to play like a lot of these West Coast dudes, you got the money match. But now, like in Street Fighter Five, whether it be because people feel like it's way easier to for like for, like to lose to somebody who you may think is lesser than you or whatever for whatever reason whatever yeah. it is maybe people have have been a lot more hesitant to money match but there's still people that do it like uh, Joey money matches a lot Luffy almost always money matches uh, Adam money matches a lot so there's people who still do it but it's definitely um, less common in the Street Fighter Five area so yeah I'd be it. It'll be sick to see if the people still keep this up when we uh, get back to offline events. Uh, <sighs> so that's all I had on that, but I just wanted to run that run that by you. But Maybe. the next thing we were going to talk about was, so there was maintenance on, I can't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday. And... Uh, I want to say it was Tuesday. <laughs> probably Tuesday. 
But, uh, you know, nobody thought anything of it. We just thought, you know, another costume or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it happened to be a patch. And the week of two big events, mind you, which is also kind of a <laughs> kind of a weird thing. But, and, and later we can talk about whether that had any effect on either event. But, yeah, so we had a patch, which was, I, I guess you would call it our midseason patch. Or that's what I think is basically. I, I, I don't like think it is. is. Yeah, I definitely. Did you see all the stuff they changed, bro? This is the mid-season patch. Bro. As many changes. Have you actually looked silly. at the list? I, I looked at some of it. It was pretty huge. I mean, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it's this, a lot of minimum. It's a lot of minimum stuff, though. Yeah, they're not like meta change. Well, some things are, but uh, like the they're definitely like pretty big changes for some characters. But the thing is, everybody didn't get touched. So the thing about this patch was not everybody got anything. Like got something. Um, the focus for the patch was trying to focus on. So, if you look at the three keynotes, what they were trying to adjust um, characters who had one frame armor moves or throw invincible moves to try and make them um, try and make them a little worse. To since you have V shift, which basically beats two options, so that was one thing they wanted to buff some of the underused V skills and V triggers. So that was the other thing that they were looking at. And a couple of other ones were just general buffs to characters who maybe they thought weren't weren't that good. But let's talk about the big winners of the uh, patch. So you, you said you hadn't really looked over it. There's only one patch note to me that kind of stood out, which I guess we'll get to that later. But not really. Okay. So I know, I know Nash is like one of the big winners, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Nash is one of them. He got a lot of stuff, and whether that actually matters in the grand scheme of things will be one thing. But yeah, at least he he's definitely a lot better now this season, or I guess not this season. This after this patch, that would be one of them. Ken, Ken is uh looking kind of crazy now, which I'm kind of unsure why they uh why they did it, but I mean, hey. They were like, maybe they felt Ken was being underused for whatever reason, but they basically turned Ken into like new age Dudley as far as like he can whiff punish you into a combo that takes you to the corner. And he might have, uh, I saw this on Twitter, but people were saying he might have the best meterless whiff punish in the game now with Crouch Heavy Punch because uh, he can whiff punish stuff with Crouch Heavy Punch, cancel in the Heavy Kick Tatsu, which keeps you grounded. He gets a combo. He can do light. He can link a light Tatsu off that. Like, he gets counter hit, Crouch Medium Punch now, into Crouch Heavy Punch, into Run, into something. That, like, he... Okay, they I remember... The DP. I remember like, seeing, like, a video, like, like kind of, like, going over that on Twitter. I was just like... I'm thinking about it now. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna hate that so much. I think it's like one of the one of the characters I don't want to see get buffed. At yeah, all. I mean, I don't mind it because I felt like, like one, the things that they did give him are good, but they're not to where I don't think you're gonna see an influx of Ken players. Like the people who were playing Ken are just gonna be doing a little bit more, are gonna be a little bit more effective with them, but I don't think it's gonna be like meta changing where it's like oh well now instead of a kumba you see a bunch of kins or whatever like yeah he's just gonna be a little bit better you know so i mean that that in itself is cool to me but yeah kin was definitely one of the most improved uh characters in this patch uh other winners would be lucia uh lucia got a bunch of buffs and they're mainly focused around her okay so one of the big issues with lucia is uh, I mean, she when she did hit you, it could hurt. But the problem is, she just went back to neutral too too often, so she couldn't really capitalize off hits. Yeah. So she's got better Oki off a lot of her stuff. She's closer after V skill. So yeah, that character is going to be a little bit more scary. And I think they adjusted her V skill too as well. And uh, Seth, uh, that's another big winner. Seth got some buffs to uh, V skill one and uh, V trigger uh, V trigger two. So now he can combo out of V skill one. And I guess the idea behind this was, uh, you know, when you did play V skill one, sometimes you would play it against a character who you didn't want to steal their move, right? But you just, by the nature of like V skill, you had to, as soon as you hit him with it, you had to, you know, finish it, right? Yeah. 
So now against a character who doesn't have maybe a good move uh, that you want to steal from them, you just do this and you're plus three and you get a combo. Uh, to compensate for that, uh, V-Skill 1 is a little bit worse as a poke. So, you know, like one of the things that was kind of annoying fighting Seth when they played V-Skill 1 was like you would just throw buttons at him just in neutral. They do V-Skill, you get tagged from half the screen and, you know, and a plus situation. But now uh, it doesn't pull you in as far. So it did get nerfed in that sense. Um, and then as V-Trigger 2 got buffed to where now it, expl- it explodes automatically, uh, which makes it a little bit scarier. Uh, because the, one of the things was you would just V-reversal out of uh, V-Trigger 2 stuff, but now if you V-reversal, you get hit, and he gets a whole combo. So, you kind of got to be a little bit more cheesy on how you defend against V-Trigger, V-Trigger 2 now. Plus, he gets a bunch of mix-ups now with that, and more damage. So. Shout to Seth. Uh, and I think that's the main... Oh, G. I forgot. They buffed G. <laughs> So now they uh, one of the issues was uh, presidentiality level three was pretty much you would never want to go to level three because your combos were worse. uh, Your fireball was harder to use. But now basically what they did is they changed level three to where now um, if you use light and medium buttons, you can get the level two specials. And if you use heavy, um, you get the level three. So now it's best of both worlds. So you get all the routes you had from level two and you still get some of the benefits of level three now. So now you actually always want to go to level three and he gets new combos now that are supposed to be more optimal than his old stuff. So yeah, they, uh, they buff G for whatever reason, even though everybody, I feel like most people have dropped him for the most part. Like only person really still sticking with G is like smug. And I know Brian secondaries him. he still plays, but yeah, I feel like all the I mean, I guess we don't see Strider anymore, so I can't even really say that as like a uh <laughs> I can't even really bring him up, but like he, you know, he might come back at the end of the year, you know. Uh eh, we'll see. I think I saw like a random replay of him playing Alex. So but uh but yeah. And then for big losers, uh really uh the only person I can think of that sticks out to me is Abigail. Really? And, uh, yeah. Did you see what happened to Abigail? I was going to say Dan, but <clears throat> that's not, nah, the Dan stuff ain't even, and actually he got buffed. The only thing that really got nerfed was the, uh, infinite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I think Abigail was hit probably the hardest out of anybody in this patch. And it's weird because he already got nerfed. In the at the beginning of the season, so it was like it was a little weird, and it was like we hadn't really even seen a lot of uh, a lot of Abigails, I guess, since the patch. But anyway, for whatever reason, they decided to nerf him. So they did the Capcom thing where they've been buffing and nerfing his health. Like it went from eleven hundred to ten seventy five one season, then back to eleven hundred, then back down to ten seventy five. So anyway, he's back down to ten seventy five and he got a bunch of uh hurt box adjustments. So in general, uh he's way easier to whiff punish or anti air. And the other thing too that got nerfed was uh EX run punch. Uh this was this move was dumb. So I'm not mad about this at all. But you know, EX run punch was like the literally like the high like no risk or very little risk high reward uh because if he hits you with it it's our remove that has a mix up he hits you with it you go in the corner he gets okay and uh he can cancel it in v trigger too yeah. anyway this move went to uh minus 29 now you literally good. block this you get a dash up punish good so uh yeah, I mean, that was like the... And if he does it when he's in V-Trigger 2, it takes way more of his meter now, so you can't just kind of mash out, you know, run in the punch and charge up Nitro Charge or whatever, or Metro yeah. Crash, and then... <clears throat> so, but yeah, he probably got hit the hardest, and uh, everybody else was like relatively like, if they did get nerfed, they were like light slaps on the wrist, like uh, I'm trying to think... Urian lost some throw invincibility on his uh, light head, but his crash medium kick 
got a little bit easier with punish and ex tackle leaves them closer now on block. And it was like minor things. You still get to play uh, Yuri and do Yuri and stuff, but um. Oh, and then the only other person, I guess, if you want to call it a big loser, it'd be Cammy. Um. So oh, one yeah. of the things people complained about was you couldn't V shift uh punish any of the dive kicks or V trigger dive kicks. So now EX dive kick and V trigger one dive kick both have more recovery. So if you do successfully uh V shift them, you actually get like good grounded punishes on her. So that's really it. And then they changed her oh, they did change her EX drill to be uh harder to go through fireballs too. So that's a little bit of a nerf. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, outside of that, the other characters who did get stuff, they were just minor adjustments. So um yeah, I mean that's uh that's really it. We'll see if it I mean I, right now, uh in the based on what we saw uh this past weekend, I don't think the patch had dramatic changes to or dramatic effect to either of those events, but they did play a part in Red Bull Kumite a little bit. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll roll into that. But I guess the last question I have is, do you think this is the last patch for this season or think we're getting anything else? Realistically, see, the thing is, there's so much, there's still a lot of time left in the season. Because, like, what? Not until January when it ends, right? <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, n- I say there's probably like one minor adjustment they can probably do before maybe September or October. You know, that might be pushing it, but I don't know. I think they can still do like another one. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this is pretty much it for the rest of the season and the rest of it's just going to be small, um, small changes. Uh, you know, like if a, something comes out and they realize it's not working like it used to be, like it's supposed to, or if it's like little bug fixes or whatever, we'll probably get that. But you know, we've got three more characters to be released: Oro, uh, Akira, uh, and then who? Else? Oh, well, whoever the final character is. So yeah, we got three more yeah. characters. So, uh, yeah. I also, mean, I believe the one? summer update is around the corner, correct? Uh, I mean, they haven't mentioned anything about uh showing anything but yeah i mean i'm pretty sure they're going to do another presentation and we'll see a full build of oro and they'll probably do a little bit more of a deep dive in the uh and the other characters and then maybe tease the final character yeah uh so. oh yeah damn so we got oro and um akira oh shit yeah but yeah i i mean we'll see i mean i i uh i don't expect it but i would be I wouldn't be mad if we got another one. So, but anyways, rolling into the rest of the stuff for this week. So, we had Red Bull Kumite, which uh, I'm gonna tell you, I haven't been this hyped for an event in a while. Um, this has been like the first high stakes event we've had in over a year. You know, because think about it, like we didn't have any offline stuff last year at all. You know, even Capcom Cup what was supposed to be Capcom kept just turned into online exhibitions. Yeah. So uh, while that was cool, it definitely didn't have the same carry the same weight as like a, uh, an actual event, you know, like an offline event. Um, but yeah, this was like, I was super hyped. And the, one of the main reasons was because uh, they quarantined. Uh, so a lot of the, not all the players, but I think most of the international players who had to fly over, they quarantined. Um, before the event so they're all in the same hotel and these dudes are just in red bull just provide them with setup so these dudes are just playing online uh either playing uh ranked or playing sets with players and this was like the first time we got to see international competition like you know like u.s players playing international players in forever yeah. so leading up to it i mean i'm like i'm watching high level sets every single day like i can turn on Adam stream see him playing gotcha coon uh bon chan you know i can go to punk stream he's playing taquito you know like these dudes are entering eu tournaments so it's like i get to see them against like hurricane like it was super sick man like and uh it really built up the hype i think if you were if you were tapped in and watching all this stuff you couldn't be i mean you had to feel it you know what i'm saying like you definitely were like oh man like this is super sick 
All right, this and is a big it, event coming up, and yeah, it gave you time. like the same vibes as uh, like those. Um, how do I want to say it? They're like the, Evo, like when everybody showed up in like in the states for Evo, and... or like well, like you know the uh, casual sets that people used to have before a tournament or whatever. Like this is what it reminded me of. Like, oh man, yo, I get to go in the, this room. And it's like, you know, you get lucky, you get to that one room, the the top player room, and everybody's in there playing. It's almost like just seeing that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of vibe I got from this, uh, being able to see these dudes play. Uh, but yeah, man, it was sick. It definitely got me super hyped, man. Did you peep any of the any of the pre-event sets? I did not. I did not. I think I missed all that, like, last week, which I know is bad, but I missed everything. Yeah, you got to go at, at a minimum. The main ones you got to check out was Takedo versus Idom. That was uh, the that was first 10. Um, I'm trying to think of another really good one. Ryan Hart was playing a lot of these dudes. Like leading up to the, the event, I think the two people that were looking super dominant where I was like, yo, these two dudes got to win it. Or they're going to be one of the ones to win it. I thought Takedo and uh, Idom. I don't think Idom lost any sets the entire time, like against anybody. I don't think he lo- like from what I was watching, he didn't lose to anybody. Like it was crazy. I you know, and we know how good he is, but like yeah. when you just see him going against like you know, like so we haven't seen international like competition like that, but like that set with uh Takedo, they were going back and forth, man. I think it ended up now I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it. I think it ended up being like 10-7 Idom, but still. To be that close, like they were trading games, they were back and forth. Yeah. You know? oh, damn. I would say that. And then Punk, he had some really good sets again. Okay, so like the, the punk set that I would peep would be Punk versus Crimson. Uh so they played on I want to say it was Salt Mine. It may, yeah, I think it was Salt Mine or Wanted. I can't remember which one. Um, oh yeah, that's right, because uh that's um that's Damascus, right? His yeah. Thing. Yeah. So it was on one of those. And uh, and anyway, so Punk was just talking trash to him the entire time. like, And I, I guess it was because I don't know if Punk just, you know, I don't know if it's Punk being Punk, but uh, I think Crimson played Bonchan or played somebody and beat him. And he was like, oh, yeah, I want to thank Kills You, which is a... Uh, He's a European carry player. He's like, oh, thanks for uh, you know teaching teaching me the matchup, blah blah blah. And then Punk was like, oh, well, Bonchan don't know the matchup. I'll show you the matchup. And then he just proceeded to like steamroll Crimson. Like I think the score was seven two, but Crimson only won one game. Like the the other game he got, it was just Punk running into stuff on purpose. And. uh <laughs> But yeah, like <laughs> that's pretty funny you saying that because it's like when they played. Yeah, no, like that definitely put a spark in him to, and I think he took a lot of what uh, Punk said to heart. You know what I mean? And like sometimes you got to do that, you know. Uh, and and even Bolt Strike had mentioned this during Red Bull Kumite. He felt like he had leveled up in like the past week more than he leveled up in a whole year. Uh, you know, playing in these online tournaments and stuff, just because you're just playing a different caliber of player. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you can feel like, you know how to play, you know, it's like those eye opening moments. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you think, you know, the game or you think about things a certain way you play somebody else. And it's like, bro, this ain't even how it is. So, um, but yeah, dude, that I was jealous. I was jealous. Just watching this. I was like, bro, uh, it, it really just made me want to get back in ground, but I was like, dog, I'm trying to be able to get back into that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I definitely feel you. I've been feeling that as of late. It's just like, bro, it's so hard to like try to find the time to actually do it for like a uh, like a long period of time like we used to. Look, you don't even have to do a, a long period of time. You just got to do it. It's I'm going to give you the first step. Uninstall TFT. That's it. Okay. Okay. So you uninstall that, and then instead of playing TFT for like an hour, man, you just jump on Street Fighter for an hour, and then that's it. See? You already on the path. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. 
Oh, okay. You got amnesia now. <laughs> you know what? I already hit plat. You know, I don't need to hit diamond. It's like, I don't, I don't need to hit diamond. Even though I've been steamrolling through all the ranks. I don't need to hit diamond. You're right. You're I see right. you trying to flex. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to hit diamond. Um, yeah, fuck that game. <laughs> I don't know how you play it. Hey, fuck Hearthstone, all right? <laughs> hey, look, I can play Hearthstone while I take a shit. Me too. So, I can play TFT. Is... I can play TFT while I take a shit. Bro, I'll be done with a Hearthstone match in like five minutes, t- well, ten minutes that's... tops. Well, that's because you get your back blown out. So you nah, know. that's because I be winning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you sure you don't be having that ass up in the air, dog? Nope. Get your back blown out? Like, damn, I don't know. Man, that might be shit. That might be where you from. <laughs> nah, not, bro. Not, not me. around here, cuz. <laughs> we winners around here, Chief. You know what oh, I'm okay. saying? Go ahead, go, ahead stream them, them, go ahead and stream them <laughs> games next time. I'll pull up and see what's up. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, hey, Greg, go ahead and pull up right quick. Watch your boy uh, do some teams. You feel me? But, uh, you know, maybe we should just pull back up in the chat and just stream like we were doing before. Or, yeah, so yeah, we used to like, just stream our ranking matches now in Discord. Yeah, I mean, shit, I, I, was, well, I was streaming yesterday when I was playing, but... Uh, but anyways, uh, back, back, back to, to the, the Red... Yeah, yeah back, back to the Red Bull shit. So, uh, let me pull up the results. What did I have? So... Uh, we had so the format was a little bit different this year. So typically, what they did is for Red Bull Kumite, they would do a lottery system, and you would just be assigned a number based on the lottery, and then that would be your bracket, uh, your bracket spot. This year, they did group stages, and I feel like for these type of events, group stages are better just because you don't you don't get a, a shitty draw for like one match and it's like oh well i got the bad matchup first round i guess i'm going to losers uh, so you got a little bit more control in how will you do um but there was some unfortunate draws with the groups so you had group uh what was it group b that had all european players which was luffy takamura and problem x and jones oh my god uh so that was shitty uh group c had punk and smug in it uh, which are their roommates <laughs> and they're in the same uh in the same group uh but that so i guess let me go back and do group a was bonchan hurricane taquito and vega patch uh i did group b group c was punk phenom kawano smug and group d was adam mr crimson gotcha coon and bolt strike so yeah anyway it was first to twos and uh only two players made it out of each group. So out of group A, you had Bonchan and Hurricane. Out of group B, you had Luffy, Takamura. Uh, group C was Punk and Phenom. And group D was Idom and Mr. Crimson, which I'm going to tell you right now, I had no idea Takeda wasn't going to qualify. But it was looking shaky because the first match of the day was Bonchan versus uh, Takeda. And Bonchan cooked up. I mean, he won that pool. I mean, he's 3-0. He beat everybody in the pool, but uh, he cooked up. And uh, there ain't nothing more cool than watching Bon Jam play Sagat. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, yo, I think Zaf might be the best Sagat. You know what I'm saying? And, and look, Zafarino's godlike. No no doubt. But when you saw some of the shit that Bon Chan was doing, I was like, bro. I feel like he he took that personal when people were saying that, and he was like, "I gotta right, I gotta right. pull up and show people what, what's going on." Well, I got the they dad power about up. Me. You know what I'm saying? I had the dad power up, dog. It was like, yo, they forgot. I'm gonna have to show them. And uh, yeah, he ended up beating Takeda. That was like the first start of it, and I was like, oh, okay, well, man, maybe Takeda. You know, maybe that was just a a weird thing because a lot of people say that's a a bad matchup, or I guess from what I hear, it's a bad matchup for Yurian, but. Uh, Takeda, you know, they interviewed him after. He's like, no, I think it's a good matchup for Yurian. Uh, the way he plays it, you can see it. Uh, he does a lot of V-reversals, so he's not even uh, concerned with V-trigger most of the time. Once he got uh, so got to the corner, he just V-reversaled anything that he could. So if it was a fireball, V-reversal, knock him down, get the gray health, and just keep doing that. So it, if you play it like that, I can see it being kind of annoying for Sagat. Because he can't really do much at that point. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, that was like the main thing. I'm trying to think of any other uh, sick matches and pools. 
A- any match Bon Chan played was was like pretty good. The match with him and Hurricane, like Hurricane played played well this weekend, but again, it was Bon Chan, bro. Like he was just DPing everything. Dive kick, back dash, DP dive kicks. He was on it. Um, I'm trying to think of another group one that was pretty good. Uh, Takamura versus oh Jones versus Problem X was pretty good, but that was like I feel like Jones he could have did better this weekend, but I don't know if it was just nerves or whatever. But he had like some good opens against Problem, but he just couldn't capitalize and win. Uh, Smug went 0 3, which I didn't expect that. And I'm trying to think of anything else. I think those are the main ones. I mean, I don't dominated his group as expected. Um, you know, like I said, he was looking super dominant and all his sets throughout the week. So, yeah, not a, not a surprise. So anyways, for the finals, uh, so for top eight, uh, you had, I guess it was cause it's groups, not group stages, but so once they got to top eight, it was single elimination. Uh, round one was first to three round two was first to four and round the finals would be first to five. Uh, this had to be nerve wracking because like you think about it, you gotta, you got like, you gotta play your ass off. There's no losers bracket. You can't be like, damn, all right, well, I got to come back. It's like, nah, yeah. you gotta fight top level competition and be on it for all them games. So, I mean, it, it made it suspenseful. It's like for a spectator's point of view, it was crazy. But if I was in it, I would have been, I don't know if I could handle that. Why not, man? It's a lot of pressure, man. It don't matter. Like, even if you barely eat by, now you got to, like, you got to tuck your shit in. Because, <laughs> like, bro, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you might get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't no, and there ain't no safety net. There's no loser's bracket to be like, well, shit, I got to make that loser's run. It's like, nah, that's it, bro. No, you gone. You got to think about it like this, right? You're already in losers. Technically. I mean, everybody in losers. <laughs> but that's even more nerve wracking. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so so the results were uh, fifth place was Punk, Hurricane, Phenom, and Takamura. Uh, tied for third was Bonshan and Luffy, and second place was Idom. First place, Mister Crimson. Let me tell you, that was a really good set, by the way. Like Crimson's run was crazy because one, he had to play. His first match was playing Punk in top eight. He just lost to Punk in a, you know, in a uh, first to seven convincingly. And, but you can, if you watched it and you compared those sets, the adjustments he made were crazy. Like he stopped, like one of the big things was Punk was whiff punishing him, which I mean, that was like people that probably, if you're a Dawson player, you probably got whiff punished two times collectively in your career as playing this character. But like Punk just kept doing it. And so I think he he really sat there and thought about how he lost and he went to the lab and he was like, all right, well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna clean it up. And he played a hundred times better. And you could tell. And and he also probably had a chip on his shoulder too. Cause he, you know, like I said, punk, you know how punk talks shit. Yeah, yeah. So he definitely was feeling it, but he stepped up, man. Like he he did his thing. So that was probably like my favorite match. And then he had the pop off after that was what was crazy. He hit him with the dominion handshake. <laughs> like, Oh, no. that, let me tell you, that's a powerful handshake, by the way. And somebody, uh, I think I posted a picture of it in discord, but yeah, somebody already was on it. I was like, somebody got to take a picture of this handshake. And they, they did, man. I was like, put that on a t-shirt. I think I did it the best though. Nah, man. See, you're uh, emulating, you know what I'm saying? You weren't the originator. So. Uh, but you know, but I still did the best, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's debatable, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I forgot. Well, let's see who else. I'm trying to think of any other matches that were like super crazy other than grand finals. Uh, Crimson and Luffy was pretty close. That was 4-3. I wasn't really sure who was going to take that one. And I know uh, Crimson, not Crimson, but um, I know Luffy doesn't like that matchup in particular, which is weird because I feel like other Mikas say it's a good matchup. 
and Dawson's generally hate it. But uh, but yeah, I mean he uh he ended up Crimson ended up closing it out. The funny thing was Adam was talking about this, and I guess I need to go back and watch the stream for the day because he was say, he said he was going to go back and uh, go over his matches from Red Bull Kumite, but uh, Bonchan picks Sagat against uh, Adam's Poison, and Adam said that Bonchan thinks Sagat beats Poison, and I'm like, yo, what is Japan smoking? Like, can I get whatever? <laughs> can I get whatever they got over there? Oh, like I would love to, but you know that's the thing. That's the crazy. You know, we have the language barriers. It's not like I can really ask him, but I'm like, yo, I really want to know what do you see in this tour? You're like, huh? Yeah, I think Sagat wins it. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's crazy, but you know, Japan is not. Uh, it's not like they're unknown for making crazy. You know. Having crazy t- character takes. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's not out of character, but I would love to like pick his brain to figure out how he, why he feels like that. But um, yeah, man. Overall, man, Red Bull Kumite was a sick event. They teased a second Red Bull Kumite, which appears to be like it may be in the U.S. So that'll be dope. Go ahead and um, come to ATL. I mean, I don't know where they'll go. Wherever they'll go, it's gonna be sick. Yeah, I um, but yeah, man, I, and I would probably be if I was there, I would have been a little bit emotional because you think about it, man. This is like the first time you've got to play high stakes Street Fighter Five in over a year, and you don't even know when we're gonna have the next offline tournament, you know what I'm saying? We like, do, who we knows? Do know. We do know what are you talking about? You talking about CEO? Yeah, that may or may not happen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? You don't know, like, you, you don't know, ain't nothing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he planned for it, but we also planned for a lot of stuff last year that didn't happen. So, yeah, you're right. And, but, but yeah, I, I, and it definitely it left a hole for me because it's like, damn, dude, I was watching all these sets at work. Like, yo, this is a uh, like you just didn't get to see like high level Street Fighter like that, you know, back to back, like just all day, every day. So yeah, it, it it's uh, left a little bit of a hole, like a little bit of a hole in my normal view and stuff. But you know, hey, look, events will be back soon enough. And uh, you know, like I said, I've definitely been uh, re-energized as far as like my competitive spirit. So looking forward to it. Hey, Amen. Your rose about to be mad sick. You know what I'm saying? Can't uh, wait. Can't wait. No. Oh no. Oh, the only other thing too. So, uh, this, like I said, we were talking earlier. There was a patch before this, um, and I don't think this the patch played a too big of a, a part in the results. Other than the only thing it hurt was Problem X. So Problem X plays Abigail. Abigail got hit hard. Well, what about um, uh, Hurricane? Uh, I mean, Cammy didn't get hit that hard. Like she did get nerfed, but like if you saw how he was playing, it looked the same to me. <laughs> you know, it like <laughs> I I don't think I saw one dive kick V shifted. So we have to get used to it, I guess. It it might have made a uh it might have played a factor in the match against Bonchan, but um yeah, I don't know. I got that would be it. And also they were playing on PC this time. And oh well, somebody else noted noted that the fact that there was a lot of screen tearing. I just thought it was a stream. Apparently they disabled V Sync. So now the players had even more like uh, the game was even more responsive. So that was like the first offline tournament on PC with V Sync off. So like these dudes are playing at like literally the best settings they could for like competitive integrity. No, I respect that, that because it's like we've been. I feel like majority of the players has been playing on PC for the past year, so that's honestly the way to play the game. And it's unfortunate that uh, it can't really be a tournament standard just because of the logistics like, behind it. Just, yeah, but you know, uh, for these like invite only events and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, they. I feel like that's pretty much the standard from now on. Well, I mean, you know, if you if you think about it, right? If you go back to uh, when they used to have the the IGN showcase for South by Southwest, uh, you know, those were ran on PC. Yeah. Um, I I don't even. Well, I couldn't even remember to be honest. Yeah, those were ran on. But PC. Yeah, I mean, I, I I believe you. I just don't remember yeah. it. But yeah, I guess that would make sense. 
And then oh, the, being, for, it, it was, was for China. Street Fighter Five, right? I'm thinking yeah. of Street Fighter Four, South by no, Southwest. They, no, that that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did do a. They did do a. Uh, I felt like they did one for Street Fighter Five, but yeah, I was thinking of the that one for Street Fighter Four. That that one had to be on Xbox. I can't remember though. Because Street Luna, Fighter Four PC Luna. was kind of funky. Like, yeah. I don't think it ever became like a good standard. People said it was better for online, but like, it felt different from 360, which was like the standard. So I guess a lot of people just didn't gravitate towards it. I also remember there was a tournament in China where they ran it on PC. Yeah, That's that not- was a clusterfuck, though. Like they, they uh, <laughs> which is the that was uh, reason. Like that would be like reason number a hundred why we never do this as like a tournament standard. Uh, there's too many things to account for. P- you know, you got to support the hardware, and then you got to have people. <laughs> you got to worry about drivers. Does uh, does this stick have? Does this drive? Is the driver installed on this machine? You know, yeah. Th- th- there's too many logistics behind it, but yeah, it would be great. You know, if uh, we get eventually get to that point where we can run tournaments on PC, but. I just need, just need the big companies now. Uh, I mean, not only that, you got to have people to troubleshoot it, man. Not true. Um, but anyway, yeah, Red Bull Kumite sick. Looking forward to the next one for uh, for this year. Um, I guess the last thing we talk about was CPT South America. And we don't have to go too deep into this because I watched most of Top 16. or I watched all of Top 16, and I watched a good bit of Top 8. I didn't finish it, but... Um, I mean, the most refreshing thing was uh, no cami. I mean, we had a cami in top six C, but like no cami in top eight. All right, that, that was just coming off of uh, <laughs> cami winning. Uh, what was it East Asia with NL winning that? So, uh, I mean, yeah, look, that was nice. It was refreshing. You know what I'm saying? Anytime I can get a tournament and I don't see cami, I consider that a good thing. So anyway, for top eight, we had. Uh, Darlin with Akuma Ryu, uh, Gonta with Colleen, uh, the homie, uh, personal friend of mine, Young Hu with uh, Birdie and G with in fifth place, nice. uh, Chaos, uh, who's Ed player in uh, fifth as well, Picaro, uh, everybody knows his bison for in fourth place, uh, Self Cool is the Urian at third, uh, Frozen with Nash and Kage, which your know, man was, uh, Hey, he was showing off some of the buffs with with Nash and uh, <laughs> top eight, but uh, yeah, he was he's playing his ass off. But unfortunately, my boy Nero the boxer uh, with Balrog took first place, man. And uh, yeah, it was actually pretty good. You know, like the thing is, I feel like people, um, I feel like people kind of like turn their nose up at some of these CPT events because there's not very many notables or like you're not you know like say for a region like this you probably have only heard of like a handful of players like maybe a couple players but uh, like it was actually super good like i'm not gonna lie like i enjoyed it you know i'm probably gonna go finish uh go back and watch uh watch grand finals but uh but yeah dude Nero was doing his thing like he the man's cooked up with ball rock after ball rock got nerfed mind you he did get a couple nerfs this patch uh but he didn't look the it he didn't look very much affected at all, you know. Yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> so I'm glad you should, that uh, should check it out, man. Sure. If anything, you gotta support the Birdie brother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, obviously, you know. He uh um, Huh? What's who's Birdie? Like what, what Young what, Who? No, what what character is that though? Oh, what do you mean what character is that? I don't know what I don't know, I don't know who that character is anymore. Oh, okay. So, because you play Rose for like a few weeks now, you don't know who Birdie is. No, I, I'm I'm gonna go back to playing Birdie. Look, man, that motherfucker old reliable. He like the Crown Vic for me, bro. It's like I know <laughs> I know everything. It's like you know I know everything about how he works. I know what don't work. How to you know? It's like when you when you learn how to whip the motherfucker, it's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> You know, I could go play a better character, but it's like, bro, I know how to make this shit work. You know what I'm saying? I know how to pilot it. So I don't really, you know, work around it. You know, you know I, actually, I actually feel you on that, too. Because it was like, damn, dog, I'll be playing these online tournaments like, shit. 
I want to keep using Rose, but uh, I know Brady's gonna get me out of the situation with, with no issues. And then yeah, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. he all reliable. Like it, it literally, you know, uh, there's very few times where there's a situation that comes up, and I'd be like, damn, I just ain't had no option that I could figure out. It's like any time when I'm, I could usually figure out, damn, I could have did this, I could have did that instead, I could do this. So yeah, it's just I guess it's just that uh, you, that's the familiarity you get with playing a character so long. So yeah. Also, it's like you know I gotta be a rocket scientist to play Rose. So yeah, I mean she definitely requires a level of uh, patience and like uh, understanding what the other person's gonna do, knowing how you wanna like you gotta be thinking about what they're doing way more like than I do with Birdie. Like Birdie, I can kind of do what I want to do. And like his natural game plan is just kind of like you're kind of countering what most characters want to do. Um versus with Rose, uh I gotta be thinking about what they're gonna do to stop me. Cause a lot of it is just <laughs> a lot of it is just kind of like I'm gonna just throw myself at you. And uh one of these is gonna hit and I hope I win after that. Pretty much. But uh, pretty much. But yeah, let me. So yeah, I would say if you get a chance, go back and watch. Um, uh, go back and watch that. And I feel like there's an event coming up, which I'm about to pull up the schedule real quick. Actually, you know, well, so I know next week, if I'm correct, is the North American Olympic qualifier. I believe I could be wrong. That's actually uh two weeks from now. Really? In one of oh. them, two weeks from now. I think it's our region. I don't know which one. No. Um, but yeah, this this Saturday there's a South America East uh, East one. That's for Brazil. Uh, so that'll be this weekend. Uh, okay. Let me see if there's any names that I notice on here. Man, 212 people registered. That's, uh, a, lot. That's a lot. Diddy Mokoff. HK Dash, uh, which I believe HK Dash got like top eight in one of these. Uh, Paulo Webb, who is a Laura player. Yes, I remember him. Um, man, some of these other names aren't really ringing a bell. But I bet you they have like CFNs that I would uh, I would notice. Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's the only ones I could really see off the top of my head. I'm like I said, I'm probably forgetting some of these players, but oh Choo Choo. There we go. I oh, see yeah. him. Yeah, he got he won uh, no he got second last year, right? And he lost to somebody. It was either second or he got third or but he was in top eight. I remember that much. Uh so yeah. That'll be uh that'll be dope to watch. And like I said, uh, like that region in particular, there's a play style that they have. And uh, they definitely not about holding down back for 99 seconds. So <laughs> late, they going to go in and I'm here for it. You know, as long as I don't have to deal with it, I'll watch it all day. But what if you, but what if you qualify? You got to play hey, one look, of them. If I do, man, look, we going to slug it out, man. Look, you came to fight. Greg, I came to fight. Greg, too. You, you, you're not a slugger though. You're not a slugger, Greg. Look, when you put me in a box, Sometimes I gotta do what I gotta do. You mean you get knocked out? <laughs> Die. Look, ain't nobody putting me on my ass, you know what I'm saying? Not willingly. All right, I respect that big dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, shit, that's all I really have for this week, man. Um looking forward the next couple of weeks. You got uh CBT events pretty much every week in uh June, except for the last week. You know, there's Middle East on the fifth, Europe West on the twelfth, and then Midwest on the nineteenth. So that uh for north america so i hope to see you in that and uh i'll be there we'll see what uh we'll see what happens but you know we'll we get trained up for it don't worry hey i'm a i'm gonna be trained up i don't know about you i'm a, i'm gonna be in there i mean i say we like me and you but i see i, I see where you're uh see where you're at okay hey look you gotta show up man i'm gonna show dog i told you Look, I got most of my work shit done, so uh, it's time to dip our dick back into it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You got to say it like that. Yeah, man. 
Hey, before we go, can we talk about can we talk about uh the Sonic Central stuff today? Fuck Sonic. I'm not about to Hey, <laughs> hey, yo, yo. <laughs> hey, hey, first of all, I already know you're about to cop that Sonic uh, Sonic Colors. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a banger. I'm not. The only thing I'm buying is that chain. I'm trying to get this Sonic that's what, grip. I, that's what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> I'm trying to get the Sonic no, grip. You feel no, me? I'm, try, I'm trying to get all of them, dog. I'm trying to get all. I'm, oh, look, I'm trying to walk out in public. You know what I'm saying? With the Sonic drip. I'm trying to be like, hey, where the, where the testers at? I'm trying to see my shit not turn red. You know what I'm saying? Nah, they finna pull up on you in the mall. <laughs> you done. You, you done. Be on like, YouTube. Like, like, I'm about to go to Japan. The Sonic drip, dog, is about to be too on, about to be too real, dog. I, I, I'm a well-known Sonic hater, so I didn't really peep anything other than there's a, uh, there's a new Sonic colors coming out, or I guess I don't know if it's new if it's a remake, but, and then the they tease yeah, like a, it's a new one. Yeah, it, no, no, it's a, a remake. Sorry. Remake yeah, is. and then they apparently like they teased like a new Sonic coming out. Yeah. Look, man, Sonic, go ahead and y'all can call this a hot take or whatever. Sonic sucks. It's flawed design from the get go. It's a game designed to run fast. And then when you stop running fast, the game just breaks. Like, literally, there's no fun to be had after that. It seems like you're describing Sonic CD. And I get No, I'm describing every Sonic game in (laughs) in existence. It sounds like you're describing Sonic CD. And I get it. The game, the game's not even built for platforming. <laughs> like, look at how he moves. Well, look, I understand that you're describing the 3D Sonic. platforming. I was so bad. Well, they the three, had to put a lock three Sonic, on. Three Sonic games are pretty are pretty bad. Besides generations, the the platforming was so bad they had to fix it by just making you lock on to shit. Look, I'm not I'm not a Sonic lover. But you know, I do appreciate what he has done. So what he has done, he's made a bunch of kids think this is how video games should be. Come on, bro! It's not like he's out here playing Fortnite or some shit like that. Look, man. Next thing you know, he's gonna be in Fortnite. I'll buy it. Then you're gonna have kids saying, "Oh yeah, that's that character from Fortnite." I hate you think so about much. That. I hate you so much. <laughs> Uh, anyways, man, I ain't got shit else. So. <laughs> um, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no. When when are we getting our hot tub stream popping? Hey, man, you got to uh, you got to go to EXO for that, man. We're getting the the durag the DRD hot tub stream. We do like Look, the man, live. I'm only I'm only doing the durag stream. Uh, not durag. I'm only doing a hot tub stream if uh you gonna hold me in the tub. If we're not doing that, if we're not hugging in the tub, I'm not doing it, Tim. Fuck. Oh, we're just like we're just giving a hug and then go back to our separate areas, nah, or like nah. Are you, gotta, you, between, you gotta. You gotta. Are you, you gotta are you spoon me. Oh, so you're gonna sit between my legs and we're gonna hold each other. Nah, you gotta spoon me. Well, that's how. That's pretty much what it is. All okay. right, guys. Yo, the DRD hot tub stream is coming soon. We'll do a live episode, of the podcast. I guess I gotta make a trip down to Alabama. The whole Greg. You heard it here fo- first, folks. Um, Be on the lookout. Actually, can it's we just do happen. like a? Can we just do like a thing where it's like we have them vote for that, and hopefully they'll say no, and so we don't have to obligate to doing that. Or well, the problem is once you give somebody an option, they're gonna say yeah. Like, come on, who wants to see two not? grown? Who wants to see two grown men? Hold each other. Oh, they don't want to see it. They just want to. They they just want us to do it. They ain't gotta watch it. <laughs> it's the fact that it's gonna happen. Jesus Christ! Look, I'm already under one terrible bet this year, so you know I don't need to be under another one. So, might as well at this point. Yeah, I might be going to Japan dyeing my hair. So that's a thing. Fuck. Good luck with that, sir. Yeah. So yeah, I think we should end the episode now. All right, Tim, where where can people find you at, man? You can find me on Twitter at 4H Tim. You can find me on Twitch at uh 4H underscore Tim. You know what I'm saying? Where can they find you at? 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Boombox Hero. You can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash magnegro with a zero at the end instead of an O. And on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash magnegro. Uh, if you are listening to this on whatever podcast hosting service you are, uh, please take a second and give us a five-star review. Helps to get the show out there, and you can also share us with any of your friends, or anybody who you think would be interested in this type of content, which is uh, two motherfuckers just rambling about uh, fighting games and other random shit. So, uh, hey, go buy, but yeah, go buy oh, go Virtual ahead. Fighter. Go buy Virtual Fighter. I mean, it's free if you got PlayStation Plus, which most people do. You might as well just sure. download that shit. So, oh, is, it, is it free now? Uh, no, it's available June first, but yeah, it'll be free if you have PlayStation Plus. Okay, we're good. We're sharing it. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what I got planned for next week, but, uh, we will be back. So, uh, it'll be a surprise to both of us. So, uh, but yeah, anyways, yeah. Appreciate y'all checking this uh, show out and, uh, we will see you next week. Peace. Peace out.